Okay, so here's what we got. This is an Estes High Flyer XL 24 millimeter rocket. We're going to do a build here. We're going to do a little bit of modification. We're going to, instead of using the engine hook, we're going to add an engine retainer, which has to be purchased separately. It is totally optional, only if you want to do it, but I'm going to do it this way for this build. Here I'm just showing the parts list. Here's your center rings, motor mount, and here's the engine hook and the engine block. We are not going to be using that, so we're just going to toss that out. Nope. Launch lug and an 18-inch parachute. Note that the launch lug is a 3/16th maxi rod size. And here's the instructions for a once over. Always try to follow the instructions to the best you can. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You might have to deviate a little bit, which we are purposely doing for this particular build. Also note that I threw out the rubber shock cord because they just deteriorate. I'm going to be using 300 pound Kevlar line. Okay, here's the decals. They are water slide decals. You get them wet, you put them on, and you got your fins. You got three of them. This is a three fin kit. All right, you get two body tubes, BT-60, a nose cone, and a red tube coupler that connects the two tubes together to make you a longer rocket. All right, so first things first, let's get these centering rings out of the cardstock. We got all these little notches and connections that are still connected to the cardstock you want to carefully get them out because if you don't it could rip up the paper so you want to take your hobby knife and just take your time and snip them out of there with your hobby knife you might have to flip it over on the other side maybe maybe not the way that i am going to mount this rocket with the 300 pound kevlar shock cord is going to be at the mount. I'm not going to do it the normal way um, where you just make the little pouch out of paper and put it towards the nose cone. I'm actually going to tie the shock cord to the motor mount and that little notch that you see right there that is what I'm going to run the shock cord through to attach it to the motor mount itself. Also note when you do it that way you have to make your shock cord longer to run through the length of the rocket and also to be long enough for the ejection charge. Plus it's going to be Kevlar so it's not going to stretch like elastic will or rubber. So you want to make sure that it's long enough that you're not going to get a zipper. Even if your rocket has a proper delay time. Or your nose cone just might go flying off with your parachute because of the force of the shock cord just because there's no shock absorption. All right, so we just about got these cut out. You can keep that centerpiece for a bulkhead later. All right, so now we're gonna test fit. When you test fit the centering rings on the motor mount itself, remember this is 24 millimeter to a BT-60. You wanna take your thumbnail and just chamfer the outer edge with the spirals. And sometimes you might have to do the inner diameter as well. This build went by pretty smooth. I didn't really have to do any sanding on the outside or the inside. So everything went on pretty snug, so there wasn't really any extra sanding to do. So right now what I'm doing is I'm showing the engine retainer. Like I said, this does not come with the kit. The engine hook style of retention comes with this kit. 
this has to be purchased separately but I think that they're a cleaner look so we're just test fitting it to see how far it has to go when you put your aft ring by the way aft means the rear of the rocket towards the opening of the engine there at the bottom of the rocket um, you want to make sure that when you put it in your rocket the motor mount when you put it in your rocket you want to make sure that the centering ring is not going to block the threaded part there I guess you can almost call that the male part and the other side the cap itself is the uh, female part but you want to make sure that it's not going to get blocked by either the rocket's body tube or the centering rings too uh, far back to where you can't put it all the way in and seat it properly so I'm making two marks here I'm gonna mark where the engine retainer itself stops where it's seated just perfectly I'm not putting any glue on it yet I won't put any glue on that towards the end of the build and you can keep the black engine hook retainer ring and the uh, engine hook and all that for another rocket, another project. You don't have to throw them out, like I said. I'm going to make another line here to kind of represent where the retainer is going to sit. See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of glue around the engine mount towards the, um, the front end and the aft end there. And I'm going to put that bead of glue there and then I'm going to slide the rings over it and kind of make its own fillet. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so now we're going to do some test fitting inside this body tube. I note that it is actually in there kind of loose so we're gonna have to use a little bit of extra glue to kind of fill that space. You can even put a little bit of filler in your glue. We're gonna be using wood glue for the body tube and the motor mount. When we put the retain retainer on later in the build either epoxy or JB Weld. JB Weld is better for heat. I'm getting the retainer flush here and just seeing how it sits just to make sure that we're still good. When you put your rings on, you also want to make sure that they're on straight and not crooked. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have used that black engine uh, hook retainer ring or another kind of tube that's similar in size to make sure that they're on their you know, perpendicular to the tube, that they're 90 degrees straight, not crooked. Okay, so I literally tied the Kevlar shot cord to the underside there, as you can see, and I ran it through that little slot through the front of the motor mount and I put the shot cord in through the tube and out the back towards the aft end so I'm gonna glue it and like I said I'm gonna put a bead around there I'm gonna move it forward to kind of make its own fillet and also glue the uh, inner diameter of the um, motor mount itself to the the centering ring to the motor mount itself When you do the engine hook way of doing it, you definitely want to take the measurements and read the directions. This right here is more of eyeballing because I don't have to be quite as exact. All right, so here we go. I'm going to put the bead around. And then I'm just going to push and pull 
the uh, forward centering ring towards the uh, front of the motor mount. Should see the shock cord is ran through the motor mount that way it's out of the way as much as possible. Actually, in hindsight, I could have just tucked it inside of the motor mount and left it inside the motor mount. It would have been out of the way for a lot of the other things. So next time I'll do that instead of just having it hang out the aft end. And then you just take your finger and you make it nice and smooth for your forward centering ring, I guess forward and fillet. Fill it. I'm trying not to get too much glue on the shock cord. Apparently glue is bad for shock cords. I don't know about exactly how it'll be for Kevlar. It just seems hit or miss in the community when you ask about it. Don't use it, use it, it's fine. Just try not to get a lot on there, but yeah, it can make it brittle. Maybe it won't be as flexible. Now you'll see when I do the other side where the knot is, which is a double knot, which is a regular old knot, overhand knot, I guess. Um, I do glue that there, so if that does cause problems, I won't do that next time. There you see, it's all glued. And at this point it's a little tacky, maybe not quite all the way dried yet. I kept moving the shock cord with the glue, so I made sure that it wouldn't have dried stiff. It did still get glue on it and the other spot going into the um, uh, motor mount. So I'm gonna put a bead here on the aft end and the trick is don't move it too far back because you don't want the centering ring to get in the way of your retainer. You don't want too much glue because that can also get in the way. So you got to find a nice sweet spot. Besides, it gives it a more clean look. I'm literally doing the same thing as I did with the forward centering ring to the rear centering ring. And now I'm just going to move it over the glue. That way it glues to the motor mount itself and making sure that's straight as possible. To make sure it's straight, yes, you probably could use another uh, ring or a coupler or something that would fit over the motor mount itself. You don't want to sit in crooked in inside the rocket that could cause you problems. I have it lined up with the line, that's done. Here's the finished product. Just waiting on it to dry, added an extra fillet. On both sides, looking good. Okay, now here's what'll make you or break you. Using wood glue, which is water-based, see there, it's a little loose, definitely got to use a little extra glue. 
We don't want that. We don't want it sitting in there crooked that can cause problems that can cause the rocket to fly crooked or not right. Or just might not glue right. So we're going to definitely use a little extra glue. Right now I'm measuring. I'm not going to move my thumb. I'm measuring to see just about how far forward I'm going to put glue. I'm going to put a band of glue inside the tube all around it. A pretty thick one. On the front, I'm going to put the motor mount in. So I'm marking that spot right there so that way I don't lose it in case I drop it. I'm going to make a band on the inner part of the tube for the forward part of the motor mount centering ring and the aft end. I'm going to put it in first and then I'm going to put another ring for the aft end. I'm going to be pretty generous with it. The only thing you don't want to happen is to get glue inside the motor mount because once it dries it can cause you issues fitting your motor in there it might, might not fit if you got a big thick glob of dry glue in there you have to sand it out or cut it out somehow it's a lot of extra work you have to work somewhat quickly and once you're committed to putting in the forward centering ring you got to be pretty quick see wood glue is water based now you can see the ring in there wood glue is water based and it will get way too snug too quickly so you, that's why you want to make sure it's in there nice and thick I have two reasons for putting it in thick in this build because it's sitting the motor mount sitting in there loose and the wood glue will dry as soon as you push it in there and make it too thin it pretty much makes an instant bond and you're not going to be able to move it and your motor mount might not be seated correctly same thing with the coupler when you'll see later on in the build okay it's in there now we're going to put the other ring on the other band of glue We're going to try not to get it all over. We're going to try and somewhat keep it clean. If you get a little bit on the motor mount right there, doesn't matter. Except for maybe weight if you're doing a competition rocket. I'm going to hold that with my thumb. It's kind of, kind of difficult. Not too difficult, but kind of a pain. But we got it. And I know about how far I want to shove it in there. So kind of move it around, give it a little bit of a twist. And then set it and forget it. Want to check the shock cord. Make sure there is no glue on it that doesn't need to be. Like I said, if it was inside the motor mount itself, it would have just been out of the way, period. So next time I'll definitely do that instead of just having it hang out in the back. Always make sure to put your caps back on and clean your nozzles. That way your glue's not drying up on you. And now we're gonna add some fillets to the aft end and to the inner tube inside there. And after this is all done, we'll shove the shock cord through towards the nose cone. Now I'm using a dowel rod for the most part. You can use an extra piece of balsa from other builds, uh, the fin stock, um, a pencil, a toothpick, but Q-tips work really, really well for this. And that's probably what I should have used. I used my finger and I used a dowel rod and then I actually wasted a lot of glue. But as you'll see, it still came out pretty decent.
also want to note that at this point in the video I'm filming with a GoPro it doesn't really take close-up uh, videos that well I do transition to my phone about halfway through the video and of course I'm not getting hardly anything on video right here it's a terrible shot I know but just bear with me All right, so now we're getting the glue on there, and then we're going to have to do some cleanup. When you're playing with wood glue, any kind of glue, stuff like that, make sure you got you some paper towels handy. Rocketeer's best friend, paper towels or shop towels, something to wipe your fingers with. When you do epoxy, usually you want to wear gloves because it can be kind of irritating to the skin. Uh, super glue, obviously, you know, you just instantly bond yourself, and that's no fun. Just got to be careful with that stuff. just squeegeeing it around with my finger. Probably should have used a Q-tip. Probably would have made it a lot easier. It probably would have made it a lot smoother. And if you didn't know, wood glue such as tight bond or Elmer's wood glue is known as yellow glue. So in the rocket community, you'll hear that term often. Use yellow glue, use yellow glue. Well, they're talking about wood glue. If you use super glue, if you choose to, just know this, that it becomes brittle, and it be becomes brittle very quickly. If you plan on flying this rocket a lot, chances are it's not going to last long because the glue is just not going to flex very good, and it's going to be crack and become brittle, and your parts are going to come apart. Don't do it. Trust me, I know. All right, here's the finished product, looking good. Not too shabby. Make sure that there's not excess glue where the retainer's gonna go. Let this dry, then we're gonna do the inside. All right, so now we gotta get in there. So it's pretty long. But I have these gator clips on a stick that I got from old Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna put a Q-tip on there and put some wood glue on it and try and get another fillet on the forward end of the uh, forward centering ring right there just to add some extra strength. I'm sure they make applicators or q-tips long enough for this job but this is all I had on hand. I know a terrible shot, but I'm just getting some glue down in there as best I can and try not to make too much of a mess on the tube, try not to touch the inner part of the body tube there where glue doesn't need to be. That way it doesn't make any issues with like your recovery system, your parachute coming out, creating extra snags. Also being careful, once again, to make sure that it does not go inside the motor mount. All 
All right, so that's what it's looking like right now. And that's what the inside's looking like right now. After one thing of glue. And this is pretty much the finished product right here. The motor mount installation is done. And there's your bottom, nice and clean. All right, let's take a break from that right now and let's take a look at the nose cone. See, I already have it taped here. Also note that I decided to go ahead and take that tape off until later on. And I'm going to paint it. And when I paint it, I'm actually gonna go ahead and paint that part. The shoulder of the nose cone. Only thing you don't want it to be is too sticky or tacky going in and out of the body tube. So what you want to do is take your hobby knife and don't cut the eyelet. You just want to punch that little bit of flashing out and literally it just came out. Sometimes it doesn't, it's not that easy, but don't cause any damage to the eyelet. Also, we can go ahead and put in the body coupler, the tube coupler, into the other body tube. It's about an inch and a half in. It's a three inch coupler, so it's about an inch and a half in. So just find your middle mark. Pick what end you want to put it in that body tube. We're not putting it on the uh, tube with the motor mount just yet. You can even wait for this step until after you put the fins on if you wanted to. But while you're waiting for glue to dry, you can continue to work on the rocket. Again, with the wood glue. You want to make sure you put plenty in. And I'm going to put it on the inside of the body tube, not on the coupler. But that way it doesn't smear the outside of the body tube. I'm going to put plenty in here, actually a little bit too much. But then again, you have to pretty much do this all in one motion. Push it in, give it a twist. I'm putting a really, really thick bead in there and you'll see that it's a little bit too much. It starts to run but I do get that wiped out. You don't want all the excess glue in there. All right, so here we go. Go ahead and just put it in right to the mark and probably give it a little bit of a twist until it don't move anymore. You want to twist, twist, a little bit, a little bit there till it just pretty much doesn't move. That way it's covered evenly. See, that's it. It's not moving. That's all you got. Otherwise, you can try and break it and you'll crush your body tube, so don't do that. That's all she's got can't move so let's take a look and see how much glue is on the inside right now uh, there's quite a bit we got to get that wiped out just take a paper towel maybe with a dowel rod and just kind of rotate it out there get as much as you can out I got lucky and got quite a bit of it out see nice and clean Nothing too bad. Now we're on to doing these fins. Sanding, that is. You could already have sanded them while they're in the cardstock. That way it stays flat for you. Just a really light sanding just to kind of flatten them out a little bit. We are going to 
use uh, wood filler on them. Just got to get these little nibs out, cut them out carefully. The other two are already done, obviously. I might have to flip it over. Here's a little different view. Just take your time, snipping them out of there. Don't do like how I used to do back back in the day, and just kind of rip them out of there, and it take a chunk of the fin with it. Mm -mm, don't do that. Just take a brand new, preferably brand new, sharp hobby knife and just cut them out. You'll thank yourself in the long run. See how to flip it over. Doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. This is balsa wood. I'm just kind of working it, see if it'll come out. Sometimes they do fall out on their own. And you can always save that scrap balsa wood for something else. Now I'm just showing sanding with the grain. You could have already done this. I actually already did somewhat while it was still in the fin stock. I want to say that this was 320 sandpaper. So after you got them cut out, what we're going to do next is get them shaped. We're gonna get the all little extra ridges off the uh, edges. The root edge, the leading edge, all that. I don't put them on there the wrong way. This rocket, the way that these fins are shaped, they could be put on the wrong way. So you could mark it with like an R for root edge with an arrow pointing towards it. So yeah, don't put them on like that, like that. So what you want to do is get all your fins together, line them up in your hand. You can even use like a, a clamp. And just keep them together. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the root edge with a little tick, R, whatever you want. That way you just don't confuse yourself, which can happen. It happens often with this kit. We're going to line them up. We're going to just knock off some of that burned edge from the laser cutter and get all those little extra pieces, those little nibs off. Just flatten it out. This is 220 grit sandpaper here, or maybe. It's either 200 or around 400. Just do a couple passes, keeping it as straight as possible. Pretty much just knocking off the burnt part. And you can rub your finger around it, along it. until it's as smooth as you feel comfortable. That way they also sit on the body tube evenly. This is not a through the wall fin kit, which you'd have to be extra careful to not take too much off. For this, you just wanna make sure that they're even. So I seem to be favoring one side over the other 
so you can see where it's lighter and darker so I kind of purposely lean it over a little bit more to even it out keep make sure you keep them straight use a piece of tape clamp whatever keep them straight or just your hands these fins actually do wind up going on the rocket pretty well pretty straight so unless it did something right flip it over do the other edge so I tend to favor one side so I have to correct it I'm also doing this at a strange angle trying to film and sand at the same time yeah that's good enough let's go on to the next one I'm not putting down a whole lot of force maybe less than five pounds I'm kind of letting the sandpaper do most of the work Stop and check, stop and check till it's smooth to the touch. Now for these fins here, I don't do a complete airfoil. I just shape the edges of the fins. See, that's nice and straight. Pretty even to me. Good enough. This is more than I would have did back in the day, trust me. No sanding sealer, nothing like that. Didn't even sand them. Just slap them on the rocket and go. But this is really satisfying, I ain't gonna lie. Nice and straight. Looking good. We didn't take too much off. We're gonna think like a knife. Think if you've ever sharpened a knife, we're gonna sand it the same way. It's kind of nice and easy. Maybe even kind of roll it in your wrist a little bit. But this is really the only edge that I do. I could have went all the way around, but I decided not to. Now you could take a black marker, which is also done with knife, uh, knife sharpening, and mark that edge that you're currently shaping. And once all the black's gone, or whatever color you're using, you know that you've made the shape that you wanted. See the way I'm doing it, I'm not going into it, I'm going away from it, so it's bringing up burrs. So you could take like a foam brush and knock off some of those burrs. When it was finished and said and done, those were gone, so don't worry about those too much. At least this is my method. I've seen where people also take uh, a sanding tee in their hand and hold the fin in the other hand and do it that way. So now I'm going into the fin. Which is actually how you sh sharpen a knife. I'm more stropping it going backwards. These actually came out a lot better than I thought they were. I've only done this like three times.
of course, take your time. Put on some music whenever you're sanding and doing something that might take a while, kind of tedious. Put on a movie, something. Not in a hurry, not a care in the world, right? Sanding. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it, but it's definitely a part of rocketry. If you want nice, pretty rockets that fly straight. Get all that out of the way. Definitely making some sawdust in there. Get you a little hand vacuum, like a little Dyson or something, or a shark vacuum, some little Amazon special. They go a long way for cleanup, trust me. Get you one. You might not see me on camera doing it, but in between takes, I use it. Hit the fin with it, hit the sandpaper. It actually makes the sandpaper last a little longer. It's not so clogged up. Do a couple passes, clean it off. Maybe take a tack cloth to it or a brush. You're going to do this with all three of them. It's a good thing about it being a three fin rocking, you got to do four. See, I'm kind of trying to round it now. I'm rolling my wrist with it. That way it's not such a sharp angle. That's my method to the madness. Everybody's got their own method. There's probably a million things that I'm doing wrong right now. It's a nice hairy arm right there. A dang gorilla in here. That's about it. All right, we're gonna use some DAP wood filler, sealer. Put a little water in with it, mix it up. I don't like mine super watery, and I don't like mine, as some people say, paint consistency. I like mine a little on the thicker side. Yeah, water and balsa does not mix. As in, it will warp your fins. And these did get pretty warped, and I didn't get it on camera. But if they do get warped, it's not the end of the world because all you got to do is put them under something heavy and flat like a really heavy book. And overnight, it'll be straight. And if not, do it again until they get straight. So I got that box there to lean them up against. Just take a little sponge brush, paint brush, whatever you got, and just paint it on there. Now, what I don't really do is go with the grain and against the grain and the other direction of the grain. I just pretty much do it all in one pass. Now, you don't really have to hit the root edge because that's what's going to stick to the rocket. But you are going to want to hit what's going to be painted. So once this is painted on there, we're going to do both sides at the same time, and then we're going to lean it up against that box and let it dry overnight. It don't take that long, but usually I do this before I go to bed. That way i got to worry about waiting on it to dry. Or early in the morning, go and do your errands, come back, should be good to go, ready to be sanded. Just kind of working in there. Try not to get it too thick or too thin. It's nice and even. And yeah, we're going to get the edge that we just sanded and shaped. And I do get a little bit on the uh, root edge. You just got to think of anything that's going to be actually painted later. You don't want any wood showing. You don't want the wood grain to show through your paint. Even if you primer it, that paint and the primer, it, it can still show the wood grain and it can look kind of rough 
or a lot of rough. I will sand the root edge again because I do get some on there. You could probably put like a really thin strip of paint, but I don't do that. There it is. There's one done. You can even get you a, like a really thin wire and kind of stick it through the wood edge and just have it dry like that. It makes a little small hole, but that ain't going to be a big deal. All right, so here's one that's already sanded. See, it's got a little grain, but it's so smooth and flat, it's not going to matter. It's really not. We're going to put plenty of paint and primer on there. See, this is one that's not sanded. That's how I coat them. That's how this turned out. Yeah, you can see on the edge there, if I go back to it. I did get some on the root edge. Not a big deal. It laid on the rocket just fine. All right, now for the good messy part, because this does make a mess. You might want to wear a mask. It can be a little cough-inducing and probably not good for your lungs. Or do it outside, which I'm not. Didn't really bother me too much. But I did have to constantly vacuum. Just taking our sanding tea. I believe this was either 200 grit or 150 grit. We're just going to knock it down to where it's smooth. Even if some of the grain might still show through, what you're going for is smooth. So I keep laying it in the uh, the dust. It can kind of cake up when you do that and you're sanding it and put pressure on it and then you have to kind of like knock it off again. So you might want to brush that to the side or vacuum it up. So that's what it's looking like so far. If you want to get that cleaned up before we painted it. I gotta get that edge. That's a pro move right there, just using the sanding tee to do the flat edges. Big brain. Trying to get it to focus. Uh, you can see a little bit there. See, nice and smooth. Just hitting that rounded edge at an angle. Not doing too much pressure. Just letting the sandpaper do the work. See, now I laid it down in that dust, so it's going to get caked up on the back. Not a big deal, but a little extra work. See, it makes a lot. I'm just constantly cleaning it off. You can take a sponge brush and uh, clean it while you're sanding it. Like, right now, that could totally be vacuumed up and you ain't got to worry about it. So now I'm hitting it with a sponge brush. 
see the stuff that gets caked on can be hard to see and you definitely don't want that on there when you go to paint it see there's a little cake spot right there I was taking my nail scratch it off came right off but we'll definitely hit it with a tack cloth before we paint it I hit that edge. Don't want to misshape it. We're just doing it lightly just to knock off whatever sealer that we got on there to make it even again. Not too bad, not too shabby. Might be a couple little rough looking spots. But, once again, we're going to prime and paint the crap out of it. It's pretty much done. Hit a couple spots that I'm seeing that still look a little rough, maybe not quite smooth. It's all about how hardcore you want to be. You want an absolute pristine, perfect finish, or a decent one, or a really bad one. It's up to you. How much time and work you want to put into it. Uh oh, the launch of this weekend? Oh man, you ain't gonna have time to mess with it that much, right? Everything looks good from 30 feet away, right? You're not gonna see all those little dings and scratches. It's gonna look really great when it's hung in that tree after you put 100 hours into it, right? Remember, trees think that really pretty rockets are more delicious. They are a delicacy. So here's all three put together. We're all still looking even. All the sealer, all the sanding, even after letting it dry and putting a book under it for a couple hours, still really straight. These fins, I gotta be honest, I actually put them under a book about three times because it just didn't seem to want to get straight. But they did wind up getting pretty straight. And when they were uh, put on the rocket, you can't even tell. They look great. Okay. First and foremost, this Bondo stuff can be pretty irritating and it's like sniffing glue. Don't do that. I should have done this whole entire sequence first thing before I did any kind of lines on the rocket or anything like that. See? Nice pretty candy cane, right? We're going to fill in those tube spirals. Now there's two different kinds. Those are the more sh uh, more shallow kind right there. Probably don't have to worry about those so much. Those will get sand sanded down and primed over. What you're focusing on is the ones that are a little more deeper. A little smaller, a little deeper looking ones. But I lied to you guys. I'm actually making candy canes, not rockets. Just kidding. Yeah, this stuff right here can be pretty noxious. So, uh, be careful with it. So we're going to fill these spirals in here. So I've, I should have already done this before I made any marks. Because the way that I do it, and people may argue with it, they should go ahead and sand it first and then put the Bondo on. Or, heck, you can even use sanding sealer like we did for the fins. Just take that toothpick. It's going to be like a little squeegee that's going to shove it down into the uh, spirals. See, I've got it backwards now because I already got the motor mount in. We're just going to take the toothpick and get it on in there. It works out. So far, the rockets that I have built doing this, 
it stays stuck in there pretty good and doesn't fall out. If it, adhesion is a worry, go ahead and sand it lightly first and then put that on there and sand it again. So I'm pointing out my line there. My launch log line, my fin lines, they're pretty much going to get erased when I sand it. But not too bad. So I got the shock cord snugged up in there. It's out of the way. It's all good, guys. It all turns out great. So let's get started on this stuff. So if you picked a bad day to quit sniffing glue, which don't do, kids, that's bad. This stuff right here, be careful with it, I'm telling you. Well-ventilated area. I don't know about it being too irritating to the skin, but it's strong. If this stuff bothers you, probably go with the uh, wood putty. But this stuff right here has been giving me good results. So Once it's all sanded, it's smooth like the spirals weren't even there. You can see them because it'll be red. So I've got the one tube already done, and we're just concentrating on those spirals right there. You got about maybe 30 seconds before it starts caking up on you, and then that's it. Wipe the toothpick off with a paper towel or a piece of paper, clean it off, and reload, and keep on going. So now we're loaded, going in for some more. This is very tedious and, of course, completely optional. But if you want a smooth finish, here you go. Just kind of squeegeeing it in there. You can kind of see once you get it into the uh, spiral. Transition. Transition. It's like a montage. And another transition. Usually when you start getting down towards the end, you just want to flip it over. And just work your way to the end of the tube. And just make sure you don't get any on the end of the tube. That way it doesn't cause any fitting issues with either it's the nose cone end or the coupler end or the fin end. Also, do not breathe this stuff in for a long time. Make sure you take a break. And there you go. There you wipe it off with the paper. And there it is. You can tell that that's still a little wet. It's got the darker color. That tube is done. And there you are. Here's one that I already did, the upper part, and here's the one I still have to do.
when you start at the end, make sure that you use upward strokes away from the body tube. Don't come back into the body tube with the sandpaper, otherwise you'll cause fuzzies at the end of it. And I'm kind of going back and forth here, but you'll see where I start favoring going just one in, one direction. I'm just feathering it out. I'm not working on one spot too much because we also are sanding the body tube. See, now I'm going up, 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 up. And if you do get some fuzzies on there, no big deal. Guess what? We still got sandpaper, so we can fix that. We're just working it until all we're going to do is just see the red line of the putty that's inside the spiral. So you can tell I got some fuzzies there a little bit, but I do get those cleaned out. It's fine. Just take your time. Doesn't need a whole lot of pressure. This is 320 grit sandpaper. You can even get away with using about 200 grit. Heck, probably even 100 grit. I didn't want to chew up the body tube too bad, so I used a 320, but I know that you can get away with using more harder grits instead of it being so fine. Didn't really cake up the sandpaper too bad, but it does make a mess as you can see getting on my desk. You can just vacuum up, wipe up, blow off. Just try not to breathe it in. Wear a dust mask. And then take the tack cloth to it or a paper towel. Just see what you're doing every now and then. It really didn't take long. See, so all you do is just see the red lines. If you got any other dings and little scratches that are in the body tube, fill those in too. Like little imperfections in the body tube. Seems to work pretty good. So now I flipped it over towards the aft end. Once you get there, do the same thing as you did as the other end. Just start going in upward strokes only away from the body tube. Poor little candy cane. Taking its stripes, is that like taking away its wings? I don't know. It is a rocket. I'm not taking away the fins. If you do get little fuzzy, it's really no big deal. Just hit it with the sandpaper. It's all going to be painted, sanded, painted, sanded. Just getting in there. Little fine little details. Wipe it off with the paper towel. There it is. Sanding it actually smooths out those other spirals as well. The ones that we did not cover up. 
pretty sure that the primer will be just fine on it. It'll be very smooth. And if not, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to take the tack cloth to it too. So you got a little bit off what the paper towel couldn't get off. Could have hit it with an air duster too, that wouldn't hurt. See a little bit of pink on the tack cloth. There it is. If you do not have one of these universal guides, I recommend them. See, I marked mine with a Sharpie, what BT size they are. Sure beats using a door frame. If you plan on building a lot of rockets, go ahead and get them. But guess what we're about to do? We're about to redraw the lines. You could probably put a shim in there and make sure you use the shorter edge. Whoops. Probably put like a shim in there, like some foam or some paper. That way you gotta try to hold it so much. See, it moves a little bit there. The shorter the tube, the easier. You gotta move your hand again. Usually what I like to do is make the fin lines a little bit shorter and usually I make the launch lug line a little bit longer or through the whole tube length. And draw a little L and maybe an X is where you wanna put your lugs. But this thing is worth every dime. A simple product and it works amazingly. They moved a little bit, but they still came out real straight. Redraw the L on there. That's the launch lug line. Now, when I put the launch lug on, I actually split it in half. Just because. Totally optional step. But I did it. So they are both in the sanded. Now I want to show off a little something. This is the fin guide I got from Qualman. And I gotta say that these are way better than the Estes fin guide. Because the Estes fin guide is just not very tolerant. It's not it's kind of flimsy and it flexed a lot. This just slides on. You line them up with your lines. And as you can see, you can make a rocket with many fins. The set comes with 
whatever size body tube and whatever thickness of fins that you have. It does have a little flex. But what you do is you tack on your fin. At least what I do. See, there it is. You start at whatever one, two, three. It's they're all marked. However many fins that your rocket has, it does have the markings on it. It's kind of hard to screw it up. which I could probably do. So don't feel too bad. It's a cool thing about the cradle, you can kind of secure it with a rubber band. I'm just making sure it lines up. See, it's, these are long fins. So we're going to do a little bit of adjusting here in a minute, but you apply your bead of glue along the root edge. Make sure that you have it how you want it, and you set it and forget it. I recommend these fin guides. I've even seen some people in the Facebook groups and forums where they use the Estes fin guide and the Qualman at the same time. I guess so they can get the bottom straight and the top straight. So now I'm just adjusting it to where it lines up on the aft end before I put any glue on it. So I'm just going to kind of, these fins sit kind of flush with the aft end. And there it is. That's pretty straight. So you get it tacked on, and once it starts getting tacky, then you just kind of keep adjusting it from there until it seems straight to you. So I'm just checking the straightness. That looks good to me. It's about where I want it. Next up, glue. We're going to continue using the wood glue. So I took the fin off, put it back on just to make sure nothing moved on me, didn't move on me. I checked all the lines. I'm ready. We're going to do this. Doesn't have to be the most thickest, fattest bead of glue because we're going to put fillets on the rocket, anyways. You don't want it running everywhere. I'm only going to do one at a time. Let one dry and then do the next one. The uh, Qualman fin guide does have little notches at the base of where the fin guide meets the body tube to where it's supposed to let some of the glue run and not glue the fin guide to the body tube or the fins by an accident. Now we're just going to straighten it up, straighten it up. We're looking good. We're satisfied, right? And that's it. Set it and forget it. They came out great. It's looking a little crooked there from the angle of the camera, plus the body tube turned a little bit sitting in the cradle. pushing it forward a little bit alright so that one's definitely tacked up pretty much dry I don't know it's about 30 minutes later we 
do the second one. I'm going to do it at an angle, not straight up and down. So I don't have the nozzle opened up all the way. It's kind of about halfway. That way I'm not getting too much glue. Got a little more control. Make sure you close it. Don't let your glue dry up on you. Maybe wipe the tip if need be. Don't get it all plugged up. Rinse and repeat. Of course, if you don't have a fin guide, there's plenty of other techniques that you can do. But I do have a slight obsession with fin straightness. slipped a little bit that's okay and you always want to look down like you're looking at, at gun sights like you want to line up your rocket take a look down make sure that it's straight not turned sideways not sagging might push up on the fins and then also push down on the uh, fin guide itself just to make sure that it's staying snug all right here you go here's all three on I got it sitting upside down and we are looking nice and lined up if your fins had a slight warp to it when you sealed them that might show but this worked great. And there it is. You yeah, see one of them sticking out a little bit. That was my bad. So is the other one over there. That was not so bad though. All right, so the launch lug. We're gonna go ahead and split it in two at an angle. It's because I like a longer launch lug. Probably could have totally just left this alone. It would've been fine. We'll cut it at an angle. I don't know, let's say it's a little more than 45. Maybe about 45. Nice sharp hobby knife. Might even kind of saw with it back and forth. See like I'm doing there. Don't poke your finger. There was no first aid used in this video for the record. See how clean your cuts come out? Not too shabby. Probably not perfection down to the micron. There it is. I'm gonna glue them just like that, but spread out. All right, so next up, we're gonna put the fillets on the fins. I'm going to tell you, it's not the most prettiest job in the world, but they did come out pretty darn decent for my standards. Put them along that line there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the rocket just like that and let gravity do the work. See, I got a little bit on the body too. That's pretty sloppy, but 
I'm going to smooth them out. You'll see. But I am going to leave the rocket just like that and let them dry just like that. That way they're not running down or up the body tube. See that? You can kind of get it just like that. Kind of makes its own fillet with the nozzle of the glue. Take a popsicle stick or your finger and get them smooth. And if it's really messed up, and if you're really not feeling it, you can always put some more sealer, sanding sealer. See this stick was a little bit too big for that bead. Didn't really touch nothing right there. So I'm going to add some more glue. Get it kind of all the way down to the aft end. A little bit more there. Maybe have you a, a cup of water nearby. Take your finger, wet it, and you can smooth those fillets out to your heart's content. That's a pretty big size stick that I have too. So if you don't want really big fillets, use a smaller one. But if you're a stickler for your fillets, These are just some of the techniques. You can angle your stick a little bit to get the depth that you want. Maybe wipe off the stick if you got too much glue on it. So I'm taking my thumb, taking a little bit that got too high right there. I'm still going to take the stick to that side. And we're not doing anything. Add or use a smaller stick. Boom, switch it up on you. Yeah, see, now we're getting it. I didn't want super, super huge fillets for this. So that's why I switched to the smaller stick. I could have kept adding glue. Sometimes you just gotta be dynamic like that. The great thing about wood glue is it gives you plenty of time to work before they start, quote, skinning over. It's where they Outside layer dries before the inside layer, excuse me, layer. If you get a couple air bubbles in there, which most likely will happen, don't freak out. That's part of wood glue. And usually the thicker, the more air bubbles. All right, launch lug time. the other modification that I did to this rocket and it probably would have been totally just fine leaving it alone but I just wanted to do it just because so I'm going to put one at the aft end and then I'm going to put the other one up right about towards the end of the fin towards the front end I'm just going to tack them on and I'm also going to give them fillets as well. And the focus was not cooperating here at this part of the video. I do apologize. But 
but you'll see what I'm doing. Basically, I want to make sure that that sharp end is touching the body tube. The pointy end of the lug. And this is what we got. And once again, lining them up like a gun with the sights. Looking straight, looking straight. Boom. All right, so there's one fillet already done and it's starting to skin over, turn them to like that brown color. And there's another fillet. And we're gonna do the other side. And then I'm gonna tilt the rocket to let gravity do the work. These don't have to be super thick. Probably about the same thickness as the ones on the fins. Maybe a little bit thinner. And if you do get air bubbles and it's going to drive you crazy, put a little more glue. Fill in that space. Or use sealer. Maybe some of the Bondo or the uh, wood filler. Kind of clean that up a little bit with the stick. And get that off the end right there. Just make sure you're not gluing the end of the launch lug where you're clogging up the launch lug. Definitely want that to slide up and down the rod freely. All right, here's the forward end of it. As you can see, I got the uh, rocket together, but it's not glued yet. I only got that for balance purposes on the cradle. Because the fins are pretty much the most weight of the rocket right now in the motor mount. There we go. Pretty thick fillet. So that one's got a little air bubble in it. So I was kind of pushing it into that little crevice right there. Kind of rounding it off a little bit. So you can shape it a little bit too. So I could have got it in there even more but I didn't it's okay well, there's air bubbles here can we pop it will it make a difference we'll see there we go uh oh yeah oh yeah wanna play again oh come on come on aha but I moved the glue a little bit oh man Look at those. Now, those are pretty. I was proud of those right there. And that's what it looks like dry. Hours later. Got that dark brown color. See all those air bubbles that are in it? Not a big deal. See, that's how I had the rocket sitting like that. I've got the shot cord kind of shimmed in there that way it's out of the way I don't have the shot cord attached yet I'll do that one of the last things when I put the aft end on the retainer
so I could have glued the coupler to the other end. Doesn't matter. Might have been easier doing it that way, but I did it this way. Now I am putting it on the coupler this time, and I'm going to squeegee out a little bit of glue onto the body tube. But it doesn't matter, because so I wipe it off, and we're going to fill that crack that the two body tubes make with Bondo. Make sure you put plenty on there. That way we don't get stuck and you have a crooked rocket. Smooth that out a little bit with the old finger. Awesome camera work, can't see anything, love it. Just gotta be very deliberate when you join them together. And I keep the uh, shock cord pulled through and out of the way. That's the reason why I put it on the outside of the coupler. I didn't want to get on the shock cord. Just continuing to smooth it a little bit. Try not to get any on the body tube. That's pulled through. We're going to kind of keep that tight and out of the way while we join the two pieces together. I'd like to apologize in advance, of course, again, for the great camera work that I'm doing. But we got them stuck together. See? Pretty decent mess. But they went together great. We didn't have the coupler sticking out. Couldn't fit them together all the way. So, just graciously wipe it. Get as much off as you can, as quickly as you can. We're going to put the Bondo on that crack. We're going to sand it anyway. So any glue that might be there is going to get sanded off. There it is. And in all of its glory. The High Flyer. Almost, 100%. So now it's time to get this finished up. This is the home stretch now. Placing those cone there for some counterbalance. I added some extra fillets to the fillets, some extra glue. Just to fill them out a little bit better. Alright, so let's get the body tubes filled in. Let's, let's fill in that seam right there. Good old Bondo or toothpick. That way when we paint it, it won't look like it's two tubes put together. Same thing like we did with the spirals. Just going to get that in there. Squeegee it in there a little bit. It's definitely worth doing this because the finish actually came out really great on this rocket. In my opinion at least. Starts to cake up. Starts to run out and time to reload.
right, we're reloaded. Finish this last little bit right here. Just kind of smudging it and smearing it all over the place there for a second. A little bit more ran out just like that just just enough almost wasn't almost was enough but was not just kind of fill in some of those areas that looked a little thin and then we'll let this dry for a couple hours there we are starting to turn pink looking dry then we'll get it sanded and I believe this is 320 grit shock cord getting out of control right there should have just shoved it down in the body tube but I was more concerned with sanding there we are all nice and smooth didn't show up at all when it was finally painted got some testers contour putty And a nose cone. Get this nose cone sanded up and get the seam filled in with that putty. We'll go ahead and rough up the surface. With, uh, 320, I believe it was. Um, that way, the putty has something else to stick to. And if you got to, you could take your hobby knife and get some of that flashing from the seam off or any other flashing that might be on the the eye loop or around that seam the tip you don't have to use such a fine grit you can go 180 100 probably kind of rounding over the tip right there and then we're gonna hit the shoulder a little bit too so I do wind up painting the shoulder and it works out great so if you don't like painting the shoulder don't but I do sanding get it wiped off with some tack cloth or so I'm using tack cloth here paper towel maybe even might even damp it up a little bit then let it dry then uh, we'll put this contour putty on there to help fill in that seam and make it seamless when we paint it So you can tell it took that shine off. And we're going to put some super glue to help strengthen the airframe here. To help with the possible zippering if our delay is not right. So 
There, I put some there, and I got it sanded. That should help with uh, zippering. Doing a test fit here, going in and out just fine. All right, so I got this side already puttied. And you just take a little bit, put it on there, and then smear it in with your finger. It's not too, too harsh. I don't even wear gloves or anything. But you do need to do it in one smooth movement. I learned that. Because if you don't, if you try to go back, you just have to go in one direction. And it's, you only got one shot. It dries so quickly. So put your little bead down and do not go back because it'll booger up on you and start drying up on you so fast. It'll, it'll just make it not as uh, smooth and probably give you more of a mess. Like literally boogers up. I can't, <laughs> I can't figure out another way to describe it. Just, it gets sticky. See, nice and smooth. See, but I went back, so don't do that. If you absolutely have to, you probably put a little water on your finger. It probably wouldn't hurt. I don't know. Alcohol might be okay. I have to look that up. That's all we want to do. Just get that seam filled in. And we'll let that dry for a couple hours. So you can kind of see here and there how it kind of boogered up a little bit. But it's dry at this point. A couple hours later, go ahead and get this sanded smooth. I'm sold on this stuff because the final result when I painted it came out better than I could have hoped. Better than anything that I made when I was a kid. I'm glad I find out, found out about this technique. And I'm sure if it's still not looking how you want, you can always put another bead on there. Wipe up, clean up the nose cone, and put you another bead on there until you, until you get it right, until you hit all the areas that you want to fill in. A little bit of caked up sticking to it. The caked up powder that's from the uh, putty. Maybe a little bit of the nose cone plastic. Just kind of rub your fingers on it, feel it, and then sand what feels kind of rough still and kind of high, and just get that lowered down and evened out. I have to put a bunch of He Man pressure on there. Kind of let the sandpaper do the work, right? Good thing is, this video is coming to a close. And if you have watched this entire thing, I thank you very much. And I hope to continue bringing you these videos. This is pretty much it with the build. might be still a little bit of a seam there but with all the primer and paint it still did come out very smooth that's looking good to me well I totally forgot to get you a, a view of the finished product here this is it this is the High Flyer XL in all its glory. The sides getting painted and the retainer on it. I'll be painting it in a different video. I already primed the nose cone, if you can't tell. So I've already started on it, so I do promise it's coming. I'll have it down in the description, most likely. A link to it. It'll probably be on a playlist as well. But I hope you enjoyed. It's been fun for me. I'm going to try to keep on bringing you the content. 
keep on flying, peoples.